Do you want to install your own water softener for your family to save some money? But does the thought of having to solder copper make you think twice? You've heard about shark bike fittings and other quick connect fittings and you've heard about PEX pipe. Is there no way that you can install a water softener using quick connect or PEX or, or shark bite type fittings? Doesn't every water softener um, have some fittings that require a soldering? Can you really install a water softener without needing to solder any pipes? Sure you can, and I'm going to show you how starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Whether you're a do-it-yourself homeowner or a plumber, this video is for you. By the end of this video, you'll know a couple of ways of how to connect your PEX, CPVC, or copper plumbing to a new Hume water softener without soldering. And by the way, the process is exactly the same if you're connecting to a tannin filter, an automatic backwashing filter, a neck sand filter, or an iron and sulfur filter. So you've probably heard about Shark Bite or John Guest Quick Connect fittings where you insert the pipe into the fitting and magically they make a watertight seal without soldering. While well, all of our Hume water filtration products can be installed using tail kits from those manufacturers for a completely solder-free installation. So basically how these fittings work is that inside the fitting they've got some very sharp little stainless steel teeth and that when you take the pipe and insert it into the fitting that's what grips the pipe and what holds it in place and there's also an o-ring in there that makes the watertight seal. To use either one of these quick connect type fittings first you need to prepare the pipe. Now the preparation is different whether you're using the shark bite type fitting or you're using the um, John Guest type fitting, and it also differs whether you're using plastic pipe or copper. It's very important when using these fittings that you properly prepare the pipe. So the first thing you need to make sure is when you cut the pipe, you make a nice square cut at the end. So if you're using copper, for example, make sure that you don't use a hacksaw, that you use a, a a proper pipe cutter like this one here to make a nice square cut on the end. Once you've cut it you need to use a deburring tool. Now you don't want to use sandpaper because sandpaper would scrape the sides and might uh, the, the, the clamps on the fitting might not grip properly because you use the sandpaper. So you need to use a proper deburring tool like one of these and you just insert the pipe and you go around a couple times and that's what gets rid of any burrs on the outside. That's very important. The next thing you need to do is on the pipe, you need to actually mark the depth that the, the pipe will be going into the fitting. And to do that, again, you can use this deburring tool and you just use a, a Sharpie and you just go around and mark it all the way around the depth. So that tells you how far, how far you're going to be inserting that pipe into that shark bite. And if you're using the shark bite fitting with copper pipe, then you need to remove this little fitting that's inside here. You can just put your finger in and carefully take it out. So if you're using it for copper, you don't use this fitting. If, however, you're using PEX, then you would take this insert and slide it into your PEX pipe. You can see here it already has the, the line on it for the depth. And then you would take the fitting, slide it in, and you'll, you'll see some resistance. And you'll see that we're not to that depth yet. So you need to kind of twist it a little bit and apply some pressure and get it to go all the way in. So when it's right up to that line, that tells you that it's properly seated and it's not going to leak. So the next step is you need to prepare the fittings for inserting into the bypass to connect it to the water softener. So within the kit, you receive three extra parts. You received a split ring, this white one here. You received an O-ring and you also received this cap. So what you need to do first is you need to put the cap on. Because if you don't put it on first, you won't be able to get it over those two other, uh, the split ring and the O-ring once you've got those on. So the next thing you need to do is you need to put the split ring on here. So you put it onto the first stage if you like, but that's not where it stays. It goes deeper. So then you open it up. I usually turn it a little bit to move it along. And then you slide it down, slide it down. So you can see here, and then it fits right in there in the, in the bottom, just below the cap. So you can see why that cap has to go on there first, and then you put on the O-ring. And that's the same whether you're, you're doing it for the, sh the uh, shark bite fitting, or if you're using it uh, with the uh, John Guest uh, fitting. 
So when using the John Guest fitting instead of the Shark Bike fitting, the process is similar but a little bit different. Again, you can use the depth gauge for marking the pipe, the depth of the pipe. Although that you're going to find with the John Guest fitting, the pipe actually goes in further than it goes in with the uh, shark bite. So again, you can mark that with a Sharpie all the way around. And again, you would have deburred this with uh, the same deburring tool. And then you grab the fitting, rotate it slightly to the left to make sure that it's unlocked. Grab your pipe, insert it into the fitting. You might have to wiggle it around a little bit to get it to go all the way home. But like I say, that line will disappear. So you need to push it all the way in. As you can see, the line is now totally gone. It's totally disappeared into the fitting. And then the last step, and don't forget to do this, is you need to turn this to the right and lock it into place. So once it's locked into place, it's set. That isn't going to come out of there. Now, both of these manufacturers advertise that their fittings can be removed afterwards, and they can, but it's not something I would recommend that you do on an ongoing basis. Personally, I prefer just to use them once and leave them. But if you did need to remove the pipe from the fitting in the future, you definitely can. It works best with one of these little removal tools, or you can use a, an adjustable wrench, but, uh, and the process is the same. The only difference is with the John Guest fitting, you need to unscrew the, the collar first, and then what you need to do is using the removal tool, snap it onto the pipe, compress it, push in on the pipe, and then pull it straight out. And the pipe will come out. Now again, I don't suggest you do that on and off, on and off a number of times, because I think you will compromise the seal, but once or twice, no problem. And then the next step is you just attach the bypass to the fitting. One word of caution if you're installing your water filtration equipment outside, the plastic fittings are not recommended because the UV light can degrade those fittings over time and then they can become compromised and leak. So when it comes to the Shark Bite or the John Guest fittings, which one do I prefer? Well, I prefer the John Guest fittings. They've been around for a long time. They've been making Quick Connect fittings for a long time and really some great, great products they've produced. Also, I like the idea that you have to tighten them down to really lock the fittings in. I really prefer that, but either one of them will work just fine. Click up here for your next video on water softener installation and I'll see you there.